Hey y'all, Higher Wire Energy here. Today we're taking a look at a Roomba robotic vacuum battery. See if we can replace the cells that are inside of it rather than paying the $70 or so that people are wanting for uh, a new battery. So we're gonna go ahead, remove and disassemble the battery, see what we're working with. Let's go ahead and dig in. So to remove the battery on one of these Roombas, very simple. All you need is a Phillips screwdriver. Two screws, pops right out. And there are flaps just like that. that you can pull it out very easily. And that's it, okay? Now you'll see this battery is rated at 14.4 volts, 1800 milliamp hours. That means that this is in what's called a 4S configuration, meaning there are four individual cells in here, each rated at 3.7 volts nominal, wired in series. Each of those are rated at 1800 milliamp hours. Now in order to disassemble the battery, the first thing you need to do is peel back the label here, here, and here. That will reveal three Phillips head screwdrivers that you can unscrew, and then this entire assembly will come out of the shell itself. Let's go ahead and do that. So, once you get the screws off, you can remove the lid. You see that the lid itself has a little bit of a weight there. There's also another weight in here. It looks like two, but it's actually one. Now there are three more screws. It's hard to see, but there's a Phillips head screw here, another one here, and another one there. Basically in the same exact positions as the ones we just removed. Now we're gonna remove those and pull this battery assembly out. Okay, so once you've got the battery assembly out, you see there's that weight right there. You can set this aside. And then here you have the battery pack. Now, I've already labeled this one uh, with positive and negative. It's actually on the back side as well. I don't know if you can see that little minus and that little plus right there. But that shows you where the negative side is and where the positive side is of this battery. Now. Although these are the two main terminals right here, you can't actually test the voltage across here with the battery out of the Roomba. So we're gonna go ahead and stick a voltmeter on these and uh, see what the voltage is and if these are low. Typically, if you see it in the, say like 12 volts or less range, that means that one of these cells is likely bad. Now it's also possible that they've just lost their capacity all of them, one of them, some of them, something like that. And that could be what's happening if your Roomba still runs for a brief period, uh, that could certainly be what the problem is. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and um, we'll test here and then we'll test across each individual cell. All right, so you see we're about 14.9 volts, which is about nominal for a 4S pack. That's just over 3.7 volts per cell. So this Roomba would go for only a few minutes and then head back to home base and need a recharge. So what that means is these cells are more than likely degraded. So we're gonna go ahead and remove them and replace them with similar capacity cells. All right, now there are solder joints here, here, and here that you can remove. I'm trying not to remove this charging board. So I'm gonna go ahead and desolder these and it looks like the nickel strip between those uh, you can pull that out and then pull the batteries off separate. Now there is one spot that's a little concerning for me, and that is, which one is it? Uh, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like there's a, a piece of nickel strip in there that comes up into the middle of this PC board. I'm gonna attack that when I get to it. We'll see if I can pull it off or not. Now, don't worry about this. This is a thermocouple. It is just adhered on there. Uh, we can pull that off without any issues. Try not to break the wires or anything like that. Pull it off nice and gently. You're going to have to pull the tape off as well. Pay no attention to this. I had kind of stuck a uh, screwdriver in on here before I realized that there were the small uh, screws holding it down. I'm an idiot, I know.
gotten each of these joints taken care of. Now there are also two more connections here and here, which are between the cells on either side. These also need to be desoldered and taken off. Easiest way to do that is take a pry bar, small pry bar like this, preferably plastic, but uh, slide it underneath this charge board here, heat both of these up to flow the solder, and it should just pop right up like this did. Once you remove the board, you see those two connections right there. Now each of these batteries can be popped out. everything intact you'll see you've got four cells in series one two three four this is a 4s configuration they're all facing the same way which is how you get that 14.4 volts so these I know are Sanyo cells they're rated at about 2100 milliamp hours each so even though that says 1800 they actually use 2100 milliamp hour cells these are also rated for a 2c discharge what that means is since these are 2.1 amp hours, which is 2100 amp hours, means that they can go continuously at 4.2 amps max. So these are not special high drain cells or anything like that, like you'd find in a uh, drill or anything. So you can replace these with um, any, really any cells that are over 2000 milliamp hours. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these with some cells that we've got out of laptop packs and stick it all together and see how she runs. Now, easiest way to try and save some of this nickel strip is by taking small needle nose pliers, get as close as you can into here, and just grab and roll, and roll, and roll. It's gonna still break like that, but you can see that I've saved most of the nickel strip. Now, not everybody has a spot welder, so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to solder these cells together. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna tin the ends of these Put a little blob of solder on the positive and the negative ends. That way when you go to put the nickel strip on, all you have to do is throw a tiny little bit of solder on that and it'll flow right in. I'm going to go ahead and bang out all four of these and show you what it looks like when I'm done. So this thing's not going to be perfect and that's fine. But hey, here's a little pro tip for you. Solder these together first and these and then solder this end here. That'll make it a lot easier to put these in. So I've got this back together. See I still need to stick a little piece of tape to keep this thermocouple in, but uh, I checked the individual voltages in these cells. They're from about 3.6 to 3.7, so I will need to charge this up. I didn't actually do a balance charge, which means that you balance out the voltage on each of these, but I do have an individual cell charger. I'm going to stick on each of these so that I can essentially balance charge it. I'll just charge them all up to full voltage. But before I get this back up, let's go ahead and double check the voltage, make sure that it's getting full voltage there. See we're at 1482, that's good. I can actually go ahead and check individual cells, 377, 367, 371, 367. There you go. As we say in the business, boom. There you go. Roomba's ready to rock. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you next time. See ya.